Alrighty guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on our unit conversion notes. And these notes can also just be called dimensional analysis. So let's get started with our first question here. Our first question says that a waterfall is about 979 meters tall. We want to figure out how tall is this in feet? So how many feet is this? So in order to do that, we need to look at the units that we're given and the units that we want. So if we see really quickly, we're given meters and we want feet. So we need some sort of relationship from meters to feet. So the question is one meter is equal to how many feet? Well, fortunately I give you a unit conversion cheat sheet and you find out that one meter should be equivalent to about 3.28 feet. Therefore, I can go ahead and write my conversion like so. 3.28 feet is equal to one meter. Now that I have this equivalency, I can go ahead and convert my meters into feet. So to do that, first thing I want to do is write my known value, and that's 979 meters. I want to include the units, and then I need to go ahead and multiply that by the ratio that I just came up with, and that's this right here. So hopefully some of you guys remember, if I have meters on top here, in order for me to get rid of meters, I got to put meters on the bottom here. That means that if I look at my ratio, I'm going to have feet on top. Next, I just put the corresponding numbers next to each other. So 3.28 and then one meter. So now if I look at this problem, I see meters times feet over meters. That means that meters cancel out and I just multiply through. So that gives me 979 times 3.281. That's going to give me around 3,212. And I look at the units that I have left, feet. Alrighty, so that was our first problem. And as you can see, it's not too bad. One of our main steps, though, is just figuring out, again, what units do we have? So in this case, it was meters. And what units do we want? Feet. Then we need to find a relation from one to the other. If we're fortunate enough, we can just do this in one step, but sometimes we're gonna to need to do multiple steps. So let's take a look at a problem where we would need more than one step to figure it out. So in this problem, we're gonna say that a marathon, so if some of you guys run marathons, awesome. I will never run a marathon, way too far. Too much running, I can't imagine running for four to five hours, that's just way too long. But a marathon is about 26 miles. And let's say that we want to figure out how many meters is this? So 26 miles is equivalent to how many meters? Well, let's look for a conversion from miles to meters. You might actually be able to come up with this. You can find it online if you Google it, but we're going to take the long way to figure this out. And instead of doing miles to meters, we're actually going to end up doing miles to kilometers, and then we're gonna do kilometers to meters. So let's start with figuring out how many kilometers are in a mile. And we know that one mile is equivalent to 1.6 kilometers. Next, we can go ahead and write how many meters are in a kilometer. So one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. And if you're asking yourself, Mr. Weiss, I have no idea what this is. How did you know that these miles and meters were equivalent to each other like so? Like I said before, I'll give you guys a unit conversion sheet that will have all of this information on it. So let's go back to our initial problem and see what we're being asked again. We have 26 miles and we gotta get it to meters. Unfortunately, we don't have that conversion. 
What we do have though is a conversion from miles to kilometers and kilometers to meters. So if we start with our 26 miles, we need to now multiply that by our fraction that includes miles. That's right here. So we have miles on top, that means we need miles on the bottom. How many miles was that? That was one mile. What goes on top? Kilometers, because that's the only ratio that we have, so 1.6. So now we could multiply it through and then get kilometers. And since this is our first problem, we'll just take things super easy and let's do that. So miles divided by miles, cancel out. And then 26 times 1.6 gives us 41.6 kilometers. Unfortunately, this is not my final answer, right? It asked me for meters, not kilometers. So now we need to bring that down here and do another conversion. So we have 41.6 kilometers times, well, let's look at our other ratio. One kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. Kilometers on top here, kilometers needs to go on the bottom here. Therefore, meters on top, how many of those? A thousand. And how many kilometers? Just one. Kilometers, kilometers, cancel out. And now we have 41.6 times 1,000 meters. That's going to leave us with 41,600 meters. All right, now that you guys are all warmed up, we're going to go ahead and do a more difficult one. This time it's a fraction. So for instance, let's say that the typical US highway speed is going to be somewhere around 65 miles per hour. And let's say that you're planning on going to Europe or something for your trip this summer or to study abroad in college. And we want to figure out how many kilometers per hour that is because we're planning on renting a car over in Europe and we want to know what our speedometer is going to look like. So this one's a little bit more difficult because we have stuff on top and stuff on the bottom. What I recommend to you guys is that you just start with one thing at a time. So let's start with the miles on top. First thing, like we said, is that we want to convert this into kilometers per hour. So since we're just keeping hours on the bottom, we should be fine. So let's take a look at our tops. We have miles and kilometers. And let's find a ratio that tells us how many miles are in one kilometer. Well, we just did that. We know that one mile or one miles is equivalent to 1.6 kilometers. So now we can go ahead and plug that in. We have 65 miles over hours. And then again, we have miles on top here. We want to get rid of those. So that means that we need miles on the bottom and we want kilometers. So we're going to put kilometers on top. How many miles? One, how many kilometers? 1.6. Go ahead and multiply through. Miles cancels out. Kilometers we still have, and we still have hours. So therefore, we're gonna end up with 104 kilometers on top and hours on the bottom. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. That still was a little too easy. So instead of converting that 65 miles per hour into kilometers per hour, we're gonna convert it into feet per second. So this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So first things first, let's start off with the miles to feet. So fortunately, I'm gonna make things a little easy for you. And I'm just gonna tell you that one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. And then we have hours and seconds. One hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. And then we have one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. Now we can go ahead and use all this information to help us solve and figure out how many feet per second is equivalent to 65 miles per hour. So let's get started, 65, and I'm gonna write my fraction like this, miles over hours. First things first, I wanna get into feet. So what does that mean? Miles on top here means miles on the bottom here. Feet on top there. 
5,280 feet is equivalent to one mile. Miles cancel out. Go ahead and multiply through. That's going to give me 343,200 feet per hour. Okay, but I told you that I want to end up with seconds, not hours. So let's go ahead and take this number, bring it down here, and continue. 343,200 feet per hour. Well, we need a way to get from hours to seconds. We don't have an hours to seconds, we have hours to minutes. So we have hours on the bottom here. This is the important part where people mess up on. That means that we need hours on top here, right? Whenever we are figuring this stuff out, we need to make sure that whatever's on the bottom is on the top and whatever's on top is on the bottom so they cancel out. So one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. So hours cancel out, but wait, we still have minutes. Our goal is to end in seconds. So let's do it again. We got minutes on the bottom here. That means we need minutes on top here, which means we need seconds on the bottom. We said one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So one over 60. Now minutes cancel out. Therefore, we're just left with feet over seconds. Go ahead and do the math. And we find out that 343,200 times 1 over 60 times 1 over 60 should give us 95 feet per second.